So uh, my name is Marcelo. Uh, this slide is the same one as the last year. So I'm a customer engineer at Google. I've worked at IBM, AWS, also at Oracle, got some certifications. And these are my contacts in GitHub. And just the quick disclaimers here. So all the ideas and concepts and everything that will be discussed here are my own. I'm not representing Google or any other company. Okay, the opinions are also mine. I'm not, I'm not sharing any opinions uh, uh, that are from Google all my, the projects uh, and the initiatives that will be discussed here uh, were all side projects. So they don't have anything to do with the work I perform here. Uh, and I usually work them on my free time. And also the, the, the last one that I think is the most important, I don't consider myself a developer. So if you, if you uh, find something really strange here, uh, it's because I, I, I'm not a professional developer. So uh, just a, a quick recap. So what's the idea behind Kubert Manager? Uh, is to create a simple web interface that you can manage Kubert workloads, uh, avoid the complexity of you know you creating YAMLs and handle YAMLs. Uh, you can reduce the error surface by uh, cre creating a standard of uh, virtual machine and environment management. You don't have to uh, have any CLI knowledge. So it's just clicking on the interface. We also have like easy disk manipulation using CDI. And uh, we're introducing some advanced features as well as some Kubernetes concepts. So, uh, oops, back in 2023, on the last Kubernetes Summit, we've talked about creating, managing, and operating simple Kubernetes workloads. Uh, we had uh, basic VMs and, you know, data volumes and pools. And now we have a lot of new stuff going on. So we have a new uh, screens for VM and VM pools, lifecycle management. We also have support for auto scaling on the VM pools. I've added support for liveness and readiness probes. So you can have control of the VMs that are maybe behind a load balancer, you know. Uh, for the sing single VM, I've added dual NIC support and also we now can choose uh, between bridge and masquerade. Uh, I've got requests uh, from users to, you know, uh, review the VNC implementation. So now I'm using the full VNC and you have the options to use, you know, uh, like clipboard and maybe configure the uh, screen resolution, stuff like that. Uh, I've also added some options regarding load balancing. We now have cluster API support as well. Uh, I've added a screen for uh, managing SSH keys. Uh, and I introduced uh, a concept of images with a custom resource definition as well, so that the user don't need to keep entering URLs for the images that they want to import. And I've added uh, support for HTTP basic authentication on the Nginx. So I, I've recorded some videos to, to demo to you because I think it's it's better to see it in action. And let me play it. Uh, so this is the main screen, uh, the new main screen. You have the uh, images screen. This is where you can, you know, uh, create images and. Uh, edit images, you put the URL, you can uh, select the namespace where you're gonna save the image. Uh, so I'm creating one here, Ubuntu, you can select the type and you enter the, the value. You also have placeholders explaining how the URLs are. And when you create, you can use this image later to, you know, uh, provision the machines. For SSH key, same thing. And this is stored in a secret. 
uh, under the namespace. And then uh, the new uh, virtual machine, we now have the auto select. When you create a virtual machine on the auto select, it will be placed on a node uh, that it, the scheduler will decide. And here we are creating a VM. So you enter the name, you can select CPU uh, types, uh, the disk, you can now use blank uh, image, and then you can select storage class, access mode, you know, one image and the size of the disk and the cache mode as well. And you have an option to add a second disk if you want. You have the dual NIC support. You can use Mutus and uh, username and password. Uh, so you can either put the password or use a SSH key that was created and network configuration. So here you can set the interface and a basic niche script as well on the screen. And uh, that's it uh, for VM creation. And then uh, you power it on. You have like the, the main actions uh, to power it on. It, CDI will import the disk and, it, and now uh, it will refresh because the uh, to get the IP from the guest agent. So uh, you have the VNC screen now with the menu with all the options that you need. And we also have like a detail screen for the VM where you can see the labels when it was created. You can see some details on operating systems, execution class, the disk, uh, and you have uh, tab with the console as well, and a button to open it in a new window. You can edit the VM type and select a different size if you want. Uh, and to show you that the SSH key works, this is a simple test where I'm trying to connect to the machine, see? Uh, and now I'm powering it off. Uh, you can see that it generates metrics from Prometheus and delete the VM as well, you can do it. And the, the disk is not deleted automatically, so you can delete it by yourself later. And this is, this is the basic changes that we had for our VM workflows. Um, now, let me, for VM pools, uh, we had some changes as well, so uh, this is the VM pools screen and for creating a pool. So same thing, you select the number of replicas and the namespace and you can select the type of machine and image, size, networking, and then you have the liveness probe. You can select between TCP and HTTP, redness probe, same thing. And then uh, you can, of course, use uh, a user and password or use the SSH key as well. And it works pretty much the same way as uh, a simple VM creation. And then uh, you can see that they are all in auto select. Previously, we wouldn't show those VMs, so now we are showing them. Uh, the VMs is still, uh, loading but you can you can see we have like the, the details the screen for for all the vms as well that are on the pool you can see the ip address and network information and the console as well and they are running the three replicas you can see that one is not ready yet you can scale or change the number of replicas you can change the type of machine for this pool and you have the details for the pool as well. So you can edit here, you can change the liveness probe and, and redness probe as well. And you can also get a simple list of the instances that are in this pool. The first one is not ready, but it, will, it, got, it just got ready as you can see. And we have now the auto scaling as well. So for auto scaling, we, we are using only CPU based for now, but you can select the pool, the minimum and the maximum number of replicas. And uh, this will 
create the auto scaling for you. We also have the load balancing screen where you can create a service in front of the of the VM pool or of an instance. If you want to expose a single instance, you can use annotations. So, for example, I use Metal LB here, uh, and you can select the type and the ports and the protocol, and it just created this load balancer. And as you can see, uh, it's working fine and you have information about it you can change the type of the load balancer and you also have the option to delete it auto scaling same thing uh, you can delete the auto scaling and for vm pools same thing you, if you delete it to uh, stop the vms as well so they're all terminating now and the data volumes for the pool uh, they go away and as you can see, the metrics reflect the, the changes as well. And the last one is for uh, the cluster API. This one is a little bigger. Uh, this is a new feature. So we have two types of clusters here. You have custom and standard. The custom is basically you enter all the information you want about the cluster. So you put the name, you can the version is just like a front end for the YAML itself. Uh, you can uh, select the virtual machine type and put the URL for the images and for the worker pool. And I've created this concept of uh, the standard cluster where you can uh, do it in an easy way. So uh, here you can put the cluster name, you select the namespace where this cluster will be. And then you can select a version. Uh, so 1.27.6, you can select a container network interface. So for example, you're getting Cilium, you can select a version. You can enable node.scaler if you want. You can customize the NES, uh, DNS, POTC, CIDR, and stuff like that. Uh, you can put annotations for the endpoint for the API. Um, and then for control panel, you can select between Ubuntu and Rocky Linux and the version as well, virtual machine type and priority class. And you can select the number of control plane nodes. The disk has all the options as well. And for pool, worker pool, you can put the name, select also the system and uh, the size of the VM. Uh, Delta scaler and the number of nodes you can also choose and the size of the disk. And you also have some features like search manager, Kubernetes dashboards, metric server, HA proxy ingress, nginx, and tecton. And you hit create and it will uh, basically create the cluster for you. Uh, and it will be, uh, it is starting. So as you can see, the control plane, the control plane is, is being pro, is in provision status. And now uh, fast forwarding a little bit, you have like some nodes already running and, and starting. And now you have like the cluster up and running. And you can see the details of the VM as well. I've added lots of labels to help identify it. Uh, you, you have the details for the VM as with any other VM as well. You can see the console. Um, and then uh, this is for a uh, worker. Same thing, uh, all the details for the VM. And you can see that it joined it successfully. And of course you have buttons to, to download the SSH key and the cube config, but you can also see the detail screen. So you can download the SSH key. If you want, you have details on the control pane, on the workers. And here you have the details on the Kubernetes, like the endpoint, the kube config file, the VXLAN uh, tunnel port. This is something important. We are generating this number randomly uh, because it, uh, each cluster needs to have its own. We have the, the KCC 
service provider, as well. So you can see that we have a service inside the cluster running the Nginx. This is the control plane screen. You can edit the size of the machine if you want, or the disk. And for uh, the worker pools, you have like a detailed screen for worker pools. So for this one, uh, you have the, the default pool that we created. And this is the template of the pool. And this is the auto scaling screen. You can change the auto scaling parameters and you have a list of the instances that are present in this cluster. Uh, here I've downloaded the cube config file. So uh, you can see that uh, the cluster have all the nodes and it's all running and it's running on Ubuntu 22.04. Uh, and you can see that we have all the pods as well running. So we have Kubernetes dashboard, we have um, a Cilium running, Ingress, see? Um, the metric server, um, Hubble is also provisioned with Cilium automatically. The Ingress and Cert Manager were all provisioned as well. And it's also getting IPs from the main uh, Kubernetes. So as you can see, Nginx uh, is getting IP from this. And we also see the, those services listed on the load balancer screen. So this first one is the Nginx that is running inside the cluster. And uh, you can see the details for it. And the, the second one will be the API endpoint for the cluster that got provisioned inside this environment. Um, this is the basic architecture for uh, for the project now. So we have, um, let me see if I can get a pen here, the laser pointer. So the user would be a browser, and then we have a service and a deployment with uh, a basic um, Angular front end. And then we, we are using Kubernetes API. We have a, a CDI, a CDI loads images from a web server in case of the cluster. So I have a web server with a CDN that is that has uh, all the images that all the combinations uh, that the user can select. We use the Kubernetes API as well, and I've created a custom resource called images to store references to the images uh, that the user needs. This is how the the web server repository looks like. So I have like a, a three JSON files with the uh, with the options that the user can select from the from the new cluster screen, and then we have like uh, folders with you know uh, images. Uh, I've been using the image builder a project to build images and put in here. Uh, here in the CNI, I have like all the YAMLs for Calico and Cilium and Flannel. And in the features, uh, we have YAMLs for Kubernetes dashboard, Tecton, and all, all the features that are on the on the screen. Uh, so for uh, what I have now in my to-do list and ideas for the future, uh, I want to try to create some kind of uh, version control for the CNI and features of the cluster so the user can you update the, the CNI or you update you know, Kubernetes dashboard or Tecton uh, directly from the screen. Uh, I'm also looking for uh, forward to the Kubernetes CSI driver uh, so that we can work on provisioning persistent storage inside the clusters. I, I'm still thinking about some user interface improvements on the load balancing on the cluster details and pull details and adding some widgets to the dashboard as well. And of course, uh, increase the testing coverage for this project. Uh, and uh, last one, I would like to, 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 to give a shout out to Alexander. Uh, Alexander has been helping me a lot in this uh, with my doubts on the code and, uh, and on CDI and Kubernetes usage. Uh, Andrew, 
has been helping a lot as well with uh, the community part and uh, uh, giving stickers in the events. Uh, David also uh, gave me some insights on the cluster API implementation, especially on the CNI part. And Roman as well is also a, a nice guy to, to exchange some ideas. So I'm up for Q&A. It's nothing in the Q&A just yet, but I will yeah. Um, plug. Uh, yeah, if um, if you are at an event where there is a Qubit person, there is a good chance that they will have some Qubit manager stickers. Uh, so for instance, uh, DevCon, FOSDEM, and uh, KubeCon, um, I'll definitely be around and I'll have these stickers if you're that way inclined. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, how many people are working on this project with you? I'm alone. I'm alone. I, I get some. Uh, I've created some, uh, uh, like a, a Google form to get feedback. So uh, I, I've collected some feedbacks over there, and also on on GitHub issues. But basically, I'm 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 working alone on it. Let's just ask if there is a repo. I've just posted the link into chat, um, and I. Uh, I'll say the same thing that I say at a lot of conferences. If you are uh, design or UI or UX inclined, um, or you have a friend who is that way, um, please uh, point them towards this project. Uh, it is just uh, myself at the moment. I'm sure he'd love some help. Yeah. Uh, we've got some questions. Uh, we have two questions. So, uh, roadmap for multi covert cluster management. Yeah, so um, I think this one is, uh, I'll have to, f I don't have a roadmap for it. Uh, so I, today, what I, it works like we have like a kubectl proxy running inside the, the container for the API. So uh, maybe I'll have to think about it to, to see how I would uh, implement this. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll give a, I'll give some some thought on it, and maybe I can implement it in the future. Uh, uh, about the C, about the CDN CDN. Okay, so um, I'm not sure I got this question. So CDN. Uh, so we have a public uh, web server hosted that, that I host with all the images, and there is a CDN in front of it. So those images for the cluster are downloaded from the internet. Uh, uh, and this web server has a CDN in front of it to make it faster. Uh, in the past, I've tried to uh, create my own image baker project to see if I could you know, shrink the images a little bit, but it, I didn't have any success. So I've been using the image builder to, to build the images. And those images are downloaded from the internet. You can, if you check on the on the project repository, uh, the, we have links for the the JSON files that I've mentioned in in my slide. And on the JSON file, you have the link for all the the image files that that are available. And Vladik says in chat that we can integrate the logs viewer into it to trace issues. Yeah, this is something I, I, I was uh, thinking earlier when I was seeing the, the other presentation on on Prometheus and stuff like that. And this is something that I I, I, I think I, I need to give some, uh, that I need to work on. I, I, I was thinking about it, you know, maybe creating like a, a logging screen so that you can, uh, so that you can, you know, see the logs for the, the the VM pod or stuff like that, and maybe uh, Prometheus metrics detailed. I don't know, maybe integrate with Grafana or stuff like that, and also um, uh, the the cube, the CDI and Kubevert API logs. So uh, I'm thinking about 
a way to, to make it uh, to, to make it uh, to the user interface as well. And I don't know Harvester, but, but maybe I don't, I don't know Harvester. I, I don't know this project. I, I, I got to give it a go and test. OK, after no yeah. further questions. I think we can end the session there, Marcel. Thank you very much for that. As always, great pleasure. Thank you.